everybody, Kelly here. Um, if you watched my MEPS video, you know that I wasn't going to MEPS to swear in or sign anything, which is my job that day and my route was gonna be a little different, as I said in my video, and that's because the route that I'm pursuing is to be an Army aviator, a warrant officer specifically, <clears throat> and the warrant officer process is pretty long and uh, there's a few more steps to take within that. And a few of those steps today I'm going to discuss in this video. So if you're looking to be a warrant officer or go through that application process for the Army, especially as an aviator, this information is for you. So starting with the SIF test, that's your Army aviation exam. Pass, you, you get two chances to take that test. If you pass the first one, you don't get a second chance to retake it. If you fail the first one, then you do get your second chance. But really, treat it as like a one chance thing. Uh, the lowest passing score for the SIFT is a 40. So you want to get above a 40. If you get a below a 40, then you can retake it if you want to. Um, if you get above it, you can't retake it, as I just said. This SIFT, um, it is a, I have a little note card here, it is a seven part exam. Every test within those seven parts is timed and they're timed differently. I can't remember how they're timed, you can find that information online or in a study book. Um, the first test is simple drawings, so you don't have a lot of time for that one at all but you basically get like five super basic pictures and one's gonna be different, five or six pictures, one's gonna be different. You have to select that. Um, I'd say you about have half a second to two seconds for each question. So it's really to see under pressure how many you can answer correctly in a short amount of time. Uh, you might get like four circles and an oval and you would select the oval and then it would spring up right away with a second simple drawing so it's like that um super easy the part that's going to get you is how quickly you're timed and you have to decide at some point if you want all right answers or if you want to answer as many as possible and i think that's where it kind of got me a little bit um your second test is in the sift exam is hidden figures. So I believe that one was the one where you get like a, a few squares and there's a bunch of lines going through them all over the place. It's like you're looking at a maze and you're supposed to find hidden drawings in each one. If you get, I, uh, my, but I, uh, words, look. What I used to study was the SIF 2020 practice workbook and this had a really good example of what this subtest in the exam would be like. So I would definitely, I'd suggest getting the SIFT workbooks and study guides. Um, I'll attach some links below this video so you guys can find those for yourselves. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. It's hard, it's just like a messy drawing and you know how to find the right picture within it. And it'll play tricks on your eyes. I think everybody has a different style for that. For me, it worked best if I just relaxed. It's like the pictures would come to me. If I focused, it's like I couldn't find anything but that's a time portion too. The third subtest in the exam is the Army Aviation Information. This is kind of test your aptitude for what you know about anything aviation related. So this is gonna go everything from, uh, oh, it's hard to remember now, I'm sorry. Um, parts of a helicopter, Bernoulli's principle, um, altitude, different things that could happen to your body at different altitudes or with different kinds of pressure, uh, what the different controls do for a helicopter, um, all that stuff. So something I suggest for that portion for sure is the Rotorcraft Flying Handbook. I'll put a link to it below. Great in and out information about flying and helicopters, how they work, ins and outs of them. Uh, definitely help me on the SIFT. And then two, they touch a lot of that in the workbooks, the SIFT workbooks like I attached below. For So the SIFT workbook will go through every single subtest you're gonna take on the SIFT and it'll give you information, just like an ASVAB book, it gives you information and then it gives you practice questions and it gives you the answers to those practice questions. Really phenomenal review and I learned a lot. Like I really knew nothing going into this SIFT until I started studying for it. There's no history of aviation in my family. I'm the first 
um, taught everything on my own through like these two books, the Rotorcraft Line Handbook and then the SIFT Practice Workbook. So uh, after the Army Aviation Information Test, you'll have the number four, which is facial apperception. So they're gonna give you kind of a view out of a cockpit of a plane and you're gonna see like a horizon line in the ocean and the land. And depending upon how that, like, you'll have multiple choice answers, let's say A through D, of what the plane is doing. So it's like little drawings. So the plane might be like this, it might be banking to the right, it might be banking to the left, it might be diving or climbing. And uh, you have to base your answer off of what the view looks like from the cockpit. It's really easy. Um, you kind of just have to know like where your horizon line is the whole time and you can kind of use your hand or tilt your head a little bit but as long as you know like I, I don't know it's super easy so it's basically seeing if you know how to use your eyes <laughs> uh number five pretest in the sift exam is your reading comprehension paragraphs you read through it you decipher the information from it you choose the best overall summary of that paragraph they also have some vocab words in there uh, easy stuff six is the math skills math skills uh, they have some like geometry algebra stuff all the basic things definitely brush up on it though like take your time to review your reading and math skills because it's not easy, but it's not difficult. Like, if you haven't practiced this stuff in a while, it's going to be real hard for you. And in the workbooks, you might learn some things that you actually were not taught in high school or wherever you're coming from. Um, the, the math portion is pretty well weighted. You have a lot more time on the math portion, so you can work out your problems and everything. But take your time to remember your math, for sure. Um, and then if you're not a very strong reader or vocab person... Uh, practice a little bit with that if you can, of course. And then the very last subtest is the mechanical comprehension. So, you know, the reading, math, mechanical comprehension, it's all very similar to what you did for your ASVAB or your PiCAT. Uh, it's all the basics. It, they just, it's an aptitude test. They want to see what you know, you know, but you should still brush up on the information. I gave myself about a solid month to study for the SIFT, and like I said, I knew nothing going into the SIFT, like, no information on aviation, anything, I kind of taught myself from scratch, and I haven't been in school for, uh, like, four years now, so I'm, I, like, I, I brushed up on my stuff in a month, and I passed the SIFT. Take your time to study, like, really study, you know, you, you gotta, it, it'll save you or it'll break you. I'll put those study sources in the links below, like the books I was telling you all about, but another resource I really like to use was, he's on YouTube, his name is Kino Thomas, he is a tutor of like all things army or military aviation really, for like all the tests you could take in your different branches, and he does tutoring that you can do, but he also posts all his tutoring sessions on YouTube. He records them and posts them so you're able like I was able to save every SIF video he made and every morning at the end of my personal study session I would go and watch like three of his SIF videos because he has a bunch and I would watch him work through the problems that the students were having trouble with he even like interviews his students after they've taken the SIF and like what they've had to say or what they struggled with and he works through it on a whiteboard for you only thing about him is you have to be a little patient because he doesn't edit his videos and so it's just kind of like running the whole time even when he's sitting and waiting or getting his cup of coffee you know etc but um he uh he's great he knows his stuff uh he definitely helped me prepare um and i was just watching the videos he posted i never got in contact with him but you can get in contact with him and he's definitely out there to help you uh i'll put his name below and then I'll try to link to his channel. I don't really know how to do that, but I'll try to figure it out. Um, 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 um. Yeah, so get the SIFT workbook for the year you're going in, 2020. I'm sure they'll have one 2021, 2022, whatever. They also keep 
changing the exams, like things update regularly. I think it used to be the AFAST, it was called, I think it was called the AFAST, and now it's the SIFT. So uh, just keep up with the Army standards for their uh, warrant officer aviation processing stuff. You are going to, it, it could just keep changing, you know, so just be on top of it. But yeah, to get the workbook, I would look up Kino Thomas, contact him if you want to. Um, Rotorcraft Flying Handbook, great tool. And then, uh, so that's really the SIFT information. If you all have any questions, feel free to contact me and comment below. Um, after I took my SIFT exam, I had to schedule my flight physicals. Now, there are two separate flight physicals, and I was told I would have to go two different days, and I was like, oh, okay, fine, you know, I'd like to go get it done in one go, but I guess most people get it done in two different days. Uh, I was lucky enough when I was there and getting my little checkup, I was like, is there any way the doctor could squeeze me in for, like, my second physical, like, if he has, you know, a few minutes, and the nurse was like, I can ask him, she's like, I don't know if he's doing anything right now, I was like, I don't want to apply any pressure, you know, I know you guys got your things going on, but if he just has time, maybe we could get them both in. I was, like, excited about it. Ugh. And she was like, no, that's a good idea. Let me talk to him. And he ended up, like, penciling it. It was so quick. I'm so happy I didn't have to make a second day trip out of it. It was, like, a three-minute checkup. It was, like, a normal doctor checkup. He came in, he tapped my reflexes, he checked, like, my n nodes and glands or whatever, um, looked in my ears simple thing uh took maybe three minutes he was in and out actually we even had a time for some like friendly banter so me him and the nurse were just like cracking jokes for about an extra two minutes maybe it was a five minute appointment so i got both my physicals done but uh so that's what the second one is like the first one is uh you go in you get a lab which is like they take a blood sample and a urine sample you know make sure you're not like preggers or on drugs or anything uh and then you have a dental exam after that. So they just, you know, want to make sure you're not going to have any problems that they have to take care of before going to boot camp or in boot camp, stuff like that. Dental exam, normal one, like you would get going to the dentist to check your mouth. They floss for you, make your gums bleed a little bit. And then they give you lip balm when you're done. Well, they gave me a lip balm, which is fun. And then actually I have some right here. It's so cute. Anyway, just me being a girl, excuse me. I don't know if guys use lip balm too. It's, it's, they moist. Then after the dental exam, I had an optometry appointment, which is eyes. Oh, this messed me up. I have, okay, so my vision's fine on everything. You know, you go in, they like look at your eyes. They make you do a colorblind test, all that stuff. You put a hand in front of your eye, you read the little things, you put a thing in front of your other eye, you read the things. Or you put your head to the machine where you press your forehead against it and you just like look in the little goggles to see the letters and numbers and you have to read like a certain row to make sure you have like 20-20 vision or 20-100, whatever. And, um, but then you go to this different person who dilates your eyes. I've never had my eyes dilated before. So that was a moment, like, ever, she was like, I'm just gonna put these in, and they burned like crazy, and I was like, okay, excuse me while I sob my eyes out. I wasn't, like, crying, but my eyes were crying, you know what I mean? Because I'm tough, I don't cry. I cry, I love crying. But, like, my eyes were pressing out this fluid, they were just, like, running. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? And then as the minutes went by, like, things were getting blurrier and blurrier, and I was like, ma'am, like, am I supposed to like not be seeing anymore and she's like oh have you never had your pupils dilated I was like no and she was like oh yeah things are gonna get blurry and fuzzy for a while y'all I've lost like all my vision I could barely see shapes and like any dimension at all I couldn't read a thing and this went on for hours and I still had a few more appointments that day too still this is all your first flight physical so I'm like walking around trying to find the rooms I'm supposed to go in and stuff and then I went to the last part of the optometrist appointment and because they dilated my eyes she was like looking in the back of my eyes to make sure I don't have any problems coming up in the future I guess and she was talking to me about how this would go she's like maybe just a couple hours <laughs> it was not a couple hours it was the rest of the whole day bro but all jokes aside like I 
I was also like kind of tired at this point because we left at four in the morning. Me and my recruiter left at four in the morning to drive there and like, I so I was kind of tired. And then because I wasn't seeing right, and I have 20-20 vision, like I'm very used to crisp imagery. Like I convinced myself that I was getting loopy. So I just started like, and I don't know, maybe it was part of my subconscious making the day funner. But I was just kind of like, ooh. <laughs> and uh, I remember like some of my other appointments I had to go to. They were like, please sign here, here, and here. And I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't read anything right now. I just have my pupils dilated. Can you read it to me? And I'll try to sign in the right spot. And they're like, oh, got okay. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry. It's part of it. So if that's the optometry appointment, then you have your occupational health appointment. That's your hearing screening. Uh, and at your hearing screening, you know, you go in the little soundproof box you put on the headphones that make little beeps for your left ear and right ear, and they just kind of test the decibels, I guess, that you can hear at the pitches. And so, yeah, that's everything about the SIFT. That's everything about your two flight physicals. Any questions about the flight physicals, just comment below, message me. I'm happy to answer your questions. Last thing. Uh, before getting my packet together and sending it into the board, I had to get my OPAT physical test done with my recruiters. That's the occupational physical assessment test. That's what that stands for. And super easy. It's a four events. It was done quickly. It was a beautiful day. We had a great time. I love working out. Uh, the first event was a standing long jump very simple you really don't have to jump that far but if you know fitness isn't really a thing it's not something you do much practicing is not gonna hurt you either getting a little leg days in you know what I'm saying and then um, seated medicine ball throw I think it they said it was 10 pounds it's like an eight pound medicine ball I think it was lighter than 10 pounds. They're like, it was around 10 pounds. I'm like, this is a freaking cotton ball right here. But uh, you have to throw it past 11 inches and 6 centimeters, I believe. And so what you're, sit you're sitting on the ground, your back's against the wall, and you throw it from your chest. And it's kind of just to see your upper body strength. It's kind of, I don't know, I think it's kind of a punch bug. <laughs> a weird assessment for upper body strength. But, you know, it, I mean, I, I guess... You know, you do push-ups with the same muscles. So, whatever. So that's part two. Part three, um, deadlifts. It starts at 120 pounds. You have a hex bar. It's not a barbell. You start at a 120 pound deadlift. You only do one, and then you can work up to your max. Um, I think they wanted to see that we could do 120 pounds, and then they went on to the next test, and I was like, wait, if I can do more weight than this, will my score look higher? They're like, I mean, I guess. I was like, I get that I passed, but if I could score higher, I want to score higher. So I asked them, I was like, can we put more weight on the hex bar, see how high I can go, and then that be what you record? And they're like, yeah. I was like, for whatever difference it makes, I'd rather it be that way, you know? Even if it doesn't make a difference, I'd rather have it not need it and be like, yeah, I'm strong. I might be, like, tiny, but I'm mighty. Yeah. So, um... I was able to add weight to the hex bar and like go up to my max and you only have to do it for one rep like I said. And then the very last part of the OPAT is the shuttle run pacer test. They set up two cones 20 meters apart and uh, it's just uh, over this like Bluetooth speaker is this recorded beeping. So you just do a light jog from cone one to cone two and then cone two to cone one, and you just go back and forth, and every few rounds, the beeping sound gets a little shorter, so it gets faster and faster over time, and it goes from, like, light jogs back and forth to kind of, like, suicide drills, and they just want to see how many you can do for as long as possible. When you're done, you just tap out. It's okay, but um, that's kind of, like, the substitute, I guess, for the cardio. Like, you're not running a mile or anything like that for the OPAT, you do the pacer test instead. So, um, kind of shows agility, change of direction, 
uh, your cardiovascular health, uh, test your breathing techniques, you know, all that good jazz. And that's the OPAD. That's what I had to take for my board packet. Apparently, before the OPAT, they were like, you're going to have to take the Army Combat Fitness Test. And I was like, okay. And then they're like, oh, no, now it's just the OPAT. And then it went back to a different test, and it changed back to the OPAT again. So every few months, or maybe even every few weeks, like the Army will change its standards for what it's looking for for whatever exam you might be going into. But um, overall, it's it's all simple stuff. You just kind of have to get your put your head down and get it done. Um, you might not have to take the OPAT. You know, you might take a different test, but for whatever it is, good luck. Uh, if y'all have any questions or comments or want to contact me, feel free to do that below. Um, it's, you got to make light of the process. It's pretty fun. If you're, if you're excited for what you're working for, the process itself is pretty exciting too. So yeah, that's the information I have on the SIFT exam the OPAT and the two flight physicals, but good luck. Get her done. Don't procrastinate. Just send it on the tendy boys and girls. But thank you so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will be posting more updates as the time goes on. So fingers crossed this again quickly. We'll see, but love you all. <laughs> Do 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 do